All right, so today I'm going to do a special on relative pronouns and relative sentences. Um, my us usually my episodes are really short, but this one is going to be a little bit longer just because the topic is a little bit more complex. So anytime I'll have a more complex topic, I will do a spezial or a special um, to just give you a little bit more of instruction and some more examples than in one of my short 365 episodes. Also, I want you to have ready a piece of paper and a pen because I want you to work through some uh, exercises with me as we go through uh, the tutorial. So it's a little bit more interactive than just one of my episodes. As I said, the topic is relative pronomen, relative sätze, so relative pronouns, relative clauses in German. Um, I did prepare a Quizlet set already on the vocab and some of the sentences and some of the grammar. Um, that you will just come across here in a little bit for you. So um, you'll find the link uh, right below uh, in the comment section or in the description, actually. And uh, you may want to already go through that before you start the actual tutorial or afterwards, um, or you want to stop and check. So that's up to you, um, but it's already available for you. Now grab your piece of paper and your pen because we're going to get started right away. So enjoy. We start out with an example right away. So Beispiel A, we have three sentences here. First, Köln ist eine Stadt. Second, sie liegt am Rhein. And last but not least, Köln ist eine Stadt, die am Rhein liegt. Now what I want you to do is write down any thoughts that come up. What observations can you make about all three sentences? You may want to pause the video for a second and uh, write all your thoughts down. There's not really a right or wrong here, but here are some possible answers. So you see that two sentences were combined to one in the last sentence. Um, you may also have noticed that the second part or second sentence elaborates on the first sentence. And then you may have already seen a couple of details such as that the conjugated verb is kicked to the end or that we have an article that connects those two sentences. Let's look at another example. So Beispiel B. First sentence here. Der Kölner Dom ist eine Kirche. Zweiter Satz, second sentence. Sie ist weltbekannt. And last but not least. Der Kölner Dom ist eine Kirche, die weltbekannt ist. Look at these sentences again and I want you to go about the same way and write down any thoughts or any observations that you make um, and also notice the highlighted article here. Maybe that will help you a little bit identifying what's going on. Here are the possible answers. So we see that the article matches the gender of the noun or the pronoun that it replaces as well as the number. Uh, so not only gender but number as well. Uh, here we had eine Kirche, die, uh, and the pronoun sie which then is replaced. Um, by the article D. In this case, the relative pronoun D. It looks exactly like the article. Moving on to our third example, Beispiel C. Das Früh ist ein Brauhaus. Man trinkt Kölsch in dem Brauhaus. And the last sentence, Das Früh ist ein Brauhaus, in dem man Kölsch trinkt. Again, write down your thoughts, your ob observations here. Uh, what do you notice? So ideally you noted the following things and that is that the article reflects the case of the noun or the pronoun that it replaces. Here we have the date of case um, and you may have also uh, or hopefully you see um, in the example that in a pronoun if it's part of a prepositional phrase that it stays part of that prepositional phrase. So here we have in dem Brauhaus. Alright, what are Relativsätze and Relativpronomen? Now what have we learned so far? Uh, the first example we saw was Köln ist eine Stadt, die am Rhein liegt. So we see that we have a relative set, which is the underlined element here. Um, and it simply provides us with more information about the first part. Köln ist eine Stadt. In fact, we're actually referring only to eine Stadt, um, which is our antecedent, uh, as we call it. So in the second half, we're simply adding on to that element. And we do so by using a relative pronomen, which is an article and looks pretty much like an article. 
So now that we have explored and gone over the idea of the relative pronomen and relative Sätze, try to combine these two. Sentence number one. Die Hohenzollernbrücke ist eine Brücke. Nummer zwei. Sie wurde im Zweiten Weltkrieg komplett zerstört. If you feel like you can do this on your own without any help, just pause here. If not, go about the checklist right here. You want to write down number one. Then you want to think about what is the item that I need to elaborate on. Then you want to ask yourself uh, where the pronoun or the noun is that you're referring to. So where is the antecedent in one? Then check gender, number and case and choose the correct relative pronomen. Write out your relative sets and make sure that the relative pronomen is close to the uh, uh, antecedent. And of course, kick the verb to the end and make sure you have the commas to separate the elements. Ideally, the sentence you came up with looks like this. Die Hohenzollernbrücke ist eine Brücke, die im Zweiten Weltkrieg komplett zerstört wurde. If you did catch some errors, uh, make sure you go back and uh, listen again to what I've said and understand where your errors were. Feel free to comment below, ask questions, and I will get back to you as well. If you got it right, let's have a look at this table. What do you notice here? Any similarities or dissimilarities to the definite articles? Exactly, so we see that they're pretty much the same except for the date of plural and the genitives. So those you've got to study new in a way if you haven't yet. So if you got that, let's practice a little more and combine some sentences. First sentence, zu Karneval gibt es viele Karnevalszüge. Second one, die Kölner verkleiden sich bei den Karnevalszügen. How does that combine? Exactly, here we see somebody dressed up and your sentence should look like this. Zu Karneval gibt es viele Karnevalszüge, bei denen sich die Kölner verkleiden. Now combine these two. Der Stadtgarten ist mein Lieblingsort in Köln. Seine Lage ist perfekt. Der Stadtgarten, dessen Lage perfekt ist, ist mein Lieblingsort in Köln. And last but not least, I just want you to fill in the blanks here on your own. Uh, you may want to pause this video right now and do this and then double check because the next, um, in the next second you will see the answers. So that's all I have for you about Relativsätze, Relativpronomen. Um, I hope those examples were helpful to you. Um, if you liked this video, please hit like uh, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot and watch another episode.